So this is where we are. Uh, we've identified uh, what a function is, and a function is a relation, okay, and goes from some set S to a set T, because that's what relations do, right? And we have one condition. Each element of S can be related to a most one element from T, okay? Um, I do want to point out that there's no restriction of the elements of T, okay? In particular, an element of T can have zero, one, or more elements in S. We actually got some examples of that already, like for example, we started with this function, right? And, and sure enough, uh, there are two elements associated, to, you know, two x values associated with the same y value, okay? And that is perfectly legitimate, right? Uh, in the case of something like the sine function, then that's even more extreme, right? Where you have lots of values associated with uh, uh, any given y value. Okay. So, so both of those are okay, both of those are functions. What we don't want is to have something like this, where you have one value of x associated with two different values of y. That's what's not allowed. Okay. So anyway, how do we uh, say this in, uh, in uh, mathematics? And uh, this is actually a, a, an important place because we really have never been able to say kind of like there's only one. So, so let's, uh, let's be careful with that. Okay. So definition of function, it's a relation from S to T where each element of S has a most one element of T that is associated with. Okay. And, and, and this is how we're going to write it. So we have um, one element of S and two possible elements of t. What we're going to say is, look, suppose that st1 is in f and st2 is also in f, right? So this would violate our rules because there's two t values associated with the same um, s value. And, and, and so this is the condition that most hold. It means that those really are in two different values. They're in fact the same value, right? And uh, this trick, right, uh, this says, you know, find two elements and that implies that they're equal is the common trick to say there's only one in mathematics, right? So this, this just combines to say there's only one. Okay, so that's a good trick. It's, it's something that you should, uh, you should definitely uh, remember and feel comfortable with, okay? Now, a little bit more uh, kind of definitions. Uh, S is called the domain of F, is the domain of the function, right? The axis. And T is called the codomain of F. So uh, those are the Y's, right? Uh, something else, but we already know that, is that for functions, we usually say T equals F of S instead of saying S comma T belongs to F. Uh, we did this for relations too, where we had A, R, B instead of A comma B belongs to R, right? Uh, the only thing I'll caution you is that this notation F of S uh, means that F is a function. So uh, don't use that notation until you know that the uh, function candidate that you're thinking of actually really is a function, okay? All right, um, so let's look at some examples here. Uh, here's a relation, and notice I'm using the relation syntax, uh, a1, b2, and z26, and that's a function from the set of letters to the set of integers, and you see how we come up with it, it's basically you know, A is 1, B is 2, and so on, uh, until Z26. Uh, I say so on just to give you the intuition, although notice that there's actually only three elements in this, uh, in this set, okay? So uh, we have uh, some letters that didn't get a number, like E, there's, there's no number that it maps to, and some integers that nobody is mapping to, like 5, nobody's mapping to 5. That's okay, right? We just need to have a relation, and there's only one tuple for each um, first element, uh, or rather for each element of the, of the first set. Okay, So here's a different uh, relation. This one has cat 3, dog 3, lizard 6, fish 4. Uh, the intuition is that this is like the length function. It tells me how many characters each word has. Okay, And again, not all words are mapped to integers simply because I didn't list them. Right? If I told you f of x is equal to the length of x, then I would have gotten them all right? with a rule, but I just gave you a, a set of a relation, so, so we didn't get them all. Um, there's more than one word that maps to three. Cat and dog both have three letters, okay? But, uh, but that's okay. Well, it wouldn't be okay is to say cat is three and cat five as well, right? No, you couldn't do that, okay? Now, here's uh, one more relation. This has students and majors. 
So we have John in computer science, Sally computer science, Sally math, Bob physics, Mary uh, ECE. And, uh, and here, this is actually not a function. And the reason that it's not a function is because of uh, Sally. And notice that Sally is in cosine and math. So that's, uh, that's two values that are associated with Sally. That is not uh, OK. OK, uh, here's another function. And this one is written using uh, the set notation for, uh, for relations, OK? So f is equal to set of tuples x comma 2x, where x belongs to the integers. And, and that actually is a function for the set of integers to the uh, set of integers. Um, normally, you would write this function instead of using that clunky notation. You just say f of x is equal to 2x, OK? We'll talk about different ways of defining functions later. Um, I do want to caution you that uh, sometimes functions that look like they're the same are actually not. So here we have four different functions, and I do mean different. So we have x comma 2x, right? Uh, but the problem is that one of them goes from z to r, and the other one goes from z to z. Okay? So, so we're thinking of them as having a, a different uh, codomains. Okay? And if they have different codomains, then they're not the same function. Okay, because to, to be the same function, you actually have to have the same tuples, the same domain, the same codomain, because that's all kind of part of, uh, of being a function. Okay, now let's look at f of x is equal to 2x from n to z, right? And uh, from r to r. Again, these are different functions. And they have different domains, which is a problem, right? And also different codomains. Either one of those would be enough to make those different, but we just got the entire uh, problem here. Uh, the same goes for any of the other ones, like uh, f of x is equal to 2x. It's not the same as x to x, because that goes from z to z, and this goes from n to z. So, you know, not the same uh, rules. So be very careful. When you look at trying to decide whether two functions are equal, you need everything to be equal. The, uh, the pairs, the uh, uh, domain, the codomain, and so on. OK, so I told you that f of x equal 2x, or the set f that contains x to x, where x is an integer, is a function. Now it's time to prove that. OK, I mean, I just claimed it, and then probably most of you believed me. But I didn't actually prove that, that, that it was. So, so we, have to, uh, we have to do that. Okay? So, so here's what we have. Uh, how do I prove that something is a function? Well, it has to have the function property, which is this. right? So in particular, I'm going to have to prove this statement, right? And the nice thing is that that is a logical statement, right? That's the kind of thing that, uh, that we know how to prove, okay? So we can do that, okay? Um, how do I prove that? Well, w like with any uh, first order calculus or, you know, predicate logic uh, problem, the first thing that we got to do is remove all our quantifiers. In here, they're all for alls, so they're fairly easy to remove. We just get rid of the quantifiers, and now uh, we have to remember that x and y1 and y2, right? These are actually all constants. Right? They're not variables, they're constants, uh, which means that they're numbers. I don't know what number they are, right? So I, I usually call them unknown constants, just to kind of emphasize that uh, I don't know what constant it is. But it could be that it's equal to 1. It could be that it's equal to 10 million. I just don't know. Okay. So, so now the, here is the statement that we have to prove. Okay. So, so let's do that. Okay, uh, we kind of uh, rewritten it over here so that uh, we don't lose track of what we're doing. Okay, and and how do we prove that? Well, again, like with any of the of the proofs that we've seen, uh, we try to use our logical connectives and our logical rules to to make the proof proceed. If something stops us, then we'll start using the definitions. So uh, here we want the definition of f. Okay, what does it mean for something to belong to f? So I want to know. I have x, y belonging to f. What does that mean, right? Remember that f is equal to this set here. And so what that means, I just abbreviated it as saying that y1 is equal to 2x. Okay. Now, um, let's, uh, let's look at that for a second. Okay. So what we have is uh, a set here. Okay. And we have um, the set of all x comma 2x such that x belongs to uh, z. And we have a tuple that uh, belongs to it. x1, y1 belongs to that, uh, that set. Okay. So, so what does that mean? 
Uh, we, we did some of this when, when we were talking about what, how exactly do we rewrite X belongs to some set and rewrite it in terms of logic. So that's what we're doing here. We want to be able to write this uh, in terms of logic. And uh, that what we said was that, well, let's see, this has a, a kind of a, a, a pattern to build it, right? And uh, so the way we translated those was by saying there exists an X such that, first of all, it has the property, so X must belong to Z, right? And then the pattern has to be equal to the element that belongs to it. So X1, Y1 is equal to X, 2X. Okay. All right. So now uh, let's look at this a little bit more carefully. We have two pairs that are equal. That means that they must agree on each one of their terms. So in particular, this is the same as saying that X1 is equal to X and Y1 is equal to 2X. Okay. But since X1 is equal to X, I can now kind of rewrite this more concisely as y1 is equal to 2x1, okay? Now let's uh, carry this down. Uh, x is actually equal to x1, so this means x1 belongs to z, okay? And uh, there should be an x that satisfies that, right? Uh, actually, there, there is no x in here, right? This is all in terms of x1 and y1, so I can just get rid of that. You know, I don't need it, right? And uh, x1 belongs to z. This is simply true. Uh, that's because of the domain of discourse. Uh, we're only talking about integers, okay? And remember that x1 is a constant, right? And it's a constant inner domain of discourse. So this is like saying 3 is an integer. Yes, that's true, okay? All right, so this is the only thing that we're left with. y1 is equal to 2x1, and that's exactly what we uh, uh, open up the definition to be for. So I just wanted to make sure that you understood exactly where uh, this is coming from. This is the same as saying that, right? So these two things are actually equivalent. Now, why is this true? Right, this whole statement, that actually ends up being just true because of properties of equality. Uh, y1 is equal to 2x, y2 is equal to 2x, so y1 and y2 are both equal to the same thing. That means that they're equal to each other. And so that's, uh, that's done. Okay. So that's, uh, that's how we prove that something is a function. right? Uh, we actually have to go through our definition of function and then end up proving something like this. right? If I have two pairs that have the same first element and um, they both belong to the alleged function, right? then the second elements have to be the same. Of, of both pairs. And in order to get the second elements, then we're going to have to open up the definition of the function itself to be able to, uh, to prove that.